Hello. Hi, ladies. Hello, hello, hello. We are live and our weekly Live at Five Masterclass Extravaganza. And today is all about breakfast, hormones, hunger, metabolism, and anything else that we kind of fling in the mix. So, who have I got live? Give me a hat. There you go. There's Claire Manning. She's on top of it. She knows what to do. If you're watching me live, there's six of you here, which is fabulous. So if you're watching me live, give me a hashtag live. And if you're catching me on replay, give me a wee hashtag replay. So hello, Karen. Hello, Rebecca. Hello, Sonia. Um, lovely to have you all here. So while everybody else is just logging in and catching up, I wanted to give a huge shout out to every single lady um who or or man i think there's probably a couple of men in here but every single person that commented liked shared put their hand up for our black friday deals they were epic i am um, i was shattered i have now caught up with a little bit of sleep but it's been a a mental 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 week in the best way possible so it just means that we can help more people for even longer realize their dreams and whatnot which is just why we're here it's amazing um, so I'm going to keep this quite short tonight because I'm going straight in to our five day money course group straight after this to do a welcome. And so, yeah, and I, I don't want to get to that one and I've, I've lost my voice. That would be awkward. Go, hey. That has actually happened before. in when I did the old challenges every couple of weeks, I've, I've, I have lost my voice a couple of times, which has been very awkward. Um, so today, as I said, we're talking about hunger hormones other stuff um and it all came about from a post that i put up on monday i think it was monday or tuesday and i was genuinely curious about um people's opinion no opinions that's terrible people's what they do with breakfast whether people eat breakfast or don't eat breakfast or how it makes them feel and whatnot um and it was huge i got like a gazillion responses and it was really interesting about how like there's a lot of yes i do and, and no i don't but there was a lot of you know i don't because this is how it makes me feel or i don't because of whatever reason and i wanted to break that down a little bit because i saw Quite a lot of people say that they don't eat breakfast, but also that they are in a bad way in terms of their energy levels, in terms of their weight and blah, blah, blah. Um, and also saw some people that do eat breakfast and aren't in the same place. So I wanted to break down some myths and give advice. And, you know, that's why we're here uh, and look at, you know, look, give my expertise and what I have seen work in the past and what we commonly see um, with our ladies. So... Um, one big thing that always comes through, so this is more from a, uh, when, when we have a client working with us, um, and in the early days, we're starting to get to know them. We get them to fill out a deep dive questionnaire about their, their eating habits and whatnots, uh, and previous, um, the, the previous, uh, sorry, Catherine, you keep making me laugh, um, a lot of our ladies come from a traditional high street diet background of Slimming World or, or Weight Watchers. So typically we see a lot of, you know, I have fruit and yogurt or just fruit or maybe fruit and a wee, some nuts or maybe some special K or maybe some porridge or, you know, very diety type foods for breakfast. And one of the very common things that we see is that they are quite, they can be very low calorie very low protein, quite carby, um, very often very low fat as well. So on the flip side, for those people that have maybe gone through the diet and background and then just go, oh, fuck it, um, we get a lot of, you know, sometimes I don't have breakfast and then some days I'll have half a loaf of bread and butter. <laughs> so, and, and that can be very high calorie, but very low nutritional value. So, um, and also we see a lot of women that have been trying are dipping their toe in the water with something called intermittent fasting, which I'm sure you probably all know what that is. Um, but basically intermittent fasting is, there's various forms of intermittent fasting, but sorry, I've done something to my laptop. Um, my intermittent fasting, the most common one at the moment is called 16-8, where you fast for 16 hours and you break your fast for eight hours. Okay, but that's it essentially. So, um what what have i said so what i have seen and i had to do a quick talk of numbers and this is 
back of a, a, a coaster mass. But anywhere between 90 to 95% of our clients not eating breakfast is not conducive to their fat loss. Okay, so we, we have some outliers. Um, one, one that comes to mind is Sharon. Um, and I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you about Sharon. She won't thank me for that, but that's, I'll tell you a bit more why they're outliers. But in 95% of cases, not eating breakfast is going to hinder your fat loss goals. Now, Clara might be closer to the numbers, um, but that is from what I have seen over the past five or six years. So breakfast, as Catherine tells us, was created as a term by Kell Kellogg's, which basically means breaking our fast. So we're fasting overnight. So when we sleep, most of us won't have eaten for 10, maybe 12 hours. But basically having breakfast, what that is doing is you are fueling your body. You are replenishing your stores of energy. You're replenishing the nutrients that have gone because you've not been doing anything other than being asleep. So all of us as humans, lovely humans, we all, are our primary energy source is glucose which is carbs, essentially. Now, if any of you have done the five-day challenge before, you might know some of this, but basically glucose is broken down and absorbed from carbohydrates. Okay, so when you have too much energy, i.e. like a, a unit of energy is a calorie, but when you consume too much energy, your body then stores that as fat, okay? But your body also stores some glucose as something called glycogen. And that, that mostly is, is in your liver. And then we get smaller amounts in our muscles. And the more glycogen we have in our muscles, the more our muscles are fueled, the better our muscles will perform, the stronger we're going to get, the healthier we're going to be, the higher our metabolism is going to work to burn fat. Okay. So that was a very whistle stop sciencey chat. But basically, when we are not eating, so when we're fasting, Overnight, the liver is breaking down that glycogen and it releases it into your bloodstream as glucose. So it, it's keeping your blood sugar levels stable throughout the period where you are not physically consuming energy. But we need this to happen for our brain because our brain relies pretty much on glucose for its energy. So if you're not consuming enough glucose to keep your blood sugar levels stable, your brain is not going to function, right? So think about hunger, Think about brain fog, think about fatigue, lethargy. Just think about the periods of time in your day where that might occur for you. Um, so anyway, I'm, I still got more, still got more. But basically, when you've gone without food for so long and your glycogen levels are low, what happens is your body then starts to break down, um, sorry, I've got a really itchy eye, uh, break down fatty acids, and that then produces all the energy that it needs. But without the carbohydrates, the fatty acids are only partially broken down and then that can reduce your overall energy levels. Okay, so I hope this is making sense. It will all make sense in a minute. So basically what happens when you break that fast, when you eat breakfast or when you eat your first, consume your first fuel, you are boosting your energy levels and you're restoring your glycogen levels ready to keep your metabolism working throughout the course of the day. But one of the things that we do find with... <laughs> Rachel, I never want to hear you in a bad mood. Genuinely, I never want to hear you in a bad mood. I think you'd be terrifying. Anyway, so basically, one thing that I do see a lot, and it, it's been particularly prevalent over the last few years with this, this whole sexiness of intermittent fasting and going, yeah, if I can cut out this full meal of breakfast, then it's going to reduce my overall energy intake, i.e. my calorie intake. But in actual fact... What we tend, what we see in 95% of our ladies is that the people that do eat breakfast and have a higher protein breakfast, they tend to be more physically active because they've got more physical energy. And also they have, they're in a better place with their overall daily energy levels. So we have less mid-afternoon slumps. Now, moving into the mid-afternoon slumps. Now, this is where hormones really, really play a part as well. Now, if we are not fueling our body properly, so if we are going far too long without a 
without a meal, without energy coming into our body, that's going to play havoc with our hormones. Now, in particular, there's a hunger hormone called ghrelin, which is called our hunger switch. Okay, so basically, when you're not eating enough or fueling your body right, the hunger switch is going to be on, which means you are going to feel hungry. You might not actually be physically hungry, you might have fuel, but the hunger switch is on. Now, when we... When our ghrelin levels, when our hunger switch is on, what ha tends to happen is we get to a certain point in the day and it tends to be between after lunch and before dinner, so that mid-afternoon slump. So that is when we start to notice our hunger levels are up. So that is why it's particularly important for women primarily to be fueling their bodies earlier on in the day. And that's why it's particularly important for women to be fueling their bodies with a higher protein meal in the morning rather than just purely on carbs. Because what will happen is that will spike up that glucose and bring it back down rather than being on a constant flow. Okay, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Now... There's been a shit ton of studies done and basically with most studies when it comes to fat loss and nutrition, you can find one study that tells you one thing and you can find a study that tells you the absolute opposite. Um, but I use Examine and Precision Nutrition primarily for my research. So when I was checking out recent studies, it is indicating is indicating that people that do eat breakfast, having breakfast is such an important part of managing hormone levels um, because studies are showing that eating breakfast is linked to the increases in that ghrelin and to that hunger switch, so it's going to keep you feeling not hungry. Um, so we need to think about how do we start getting more breakfast eaten? How do we eat breakfast properly? And not just see it as a, I'm going to grab a Miller Lite out the fridge because it's not going to be nutritionally balanced enough to be able to do all those things that I talked about, i.e. keep your sugar levels at a constant, um, have enough protein in so your hunger switch is you know, switched off throughout the course of the day so you don't get that brain fog, that lethargy and that fatigue in the middle part of the day. So, some things for you for to look out on so I get that not everybody wants to eat breakfast and that is absolutely cool you know I go through I have tried various forms of intermittent fasting through research and whatnot and just as a very recent example when was this earlier this year I couldn't, I couldn't tell you a particular month but I was trying 16-8 I've tried it before and I tried but that was pre-40s um trying it again in my 40s and stuck to my same calorie numbers that I, I know is my deficit number, but just didn't eat until 12 o'clock and then had a rigid cutoff point of eight. And the my fat loss was so, 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 so slow. Reintroduced breakfast, same calories, but over a longer period of the day, weight loss started coming up again. So there's an also, there's more research around cortisol as well in women in their 40s and 50s. Um, there's not as many studies about this because um, researchers don't tend to study women in their 40s and 50s because of their hormonal ups and downs and we don't get a, we can't really get a plateau, we don't, we know, we don't get a baseline. Um, so there's never really an awful lot of research in this area for our kind of age range. But basically what it suggests is the longer that you're going without food increases our stress hormone, which is cortisol. Um, and when your stress cortisol increases, it, it basically then plays havoc with your metabolism. So your body doesn't want to lose fat because it's too busy dealing with the high stress. It doesn't know why you're stressed. It doesn't know that it's because you've not eaten it or you've been chased by lions across a, a savannah plain. It, does, it just doesn't know. Um, so that is another reason why intermittent fasting has now been seen as like maybe it's not the optimal way to eat for women, um, especially in their 40s and their 50s. Um, yes, it stresses me out not eating. Uh, it really, really does. Anyway, so here's some scenarios. So if you don't eat breakfast, if you currently don't eat breakfast and you don't face any issues with 
uh, getting the munchies or having any fatigue or mid-afternoon slumps, then happy days. You don't need to do anything different, you know. If you're struggling to lose fat, then you need to look at your overall energy consumption, i.e. how much food you're eating throughout the course of the day and your activity levels. Um, but if you, do, if you don't eat breakfast, but you do face mid-afternoon slumps or you get the munchie attacks or you get that, oh, I need biscuits or I need carbs, whatever, then I would recommend implementing a breakfast into your routine. Um, if you, the lady that I mentioned earlier, Sharon, she, when I first spoke to her, she didn't eat breakfast, never really had, never really bothered, and she didn't face any other challenges. And I was like, oh, fine, you know, you don't have to, it's, it's okay. Um, but if it's a case of, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> coughing fit. If you are not hungry in the morning and that's why you choose to not have breakfast, you want to look at what's going on in the evening. <coughs> Are you eating too much in the evening, too late? And bring that back. <coughs> so that you are hungry in the morning. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is where I'm going to leave you. <coughs> while I die. So Clara has made some good comments here. Um... <coughs> if you do want more information, just ping us a message and we'll get back to you. And um, I need to go and recover before I do my next live. So thank you all for joining and I will see you all soon. All right, have a lovely evening. Take care, ladies. Bye-bye.